So I have NixOS up and running pretty well, but the question is what's going on under the hood? It's pretty complicated, but pretty simple at the same time. So let's have a look at where it stores everything and try and shed a bit of light on this. Hello, it's Dorian. Thanks for tuning in to Dot Slash. If you watch my first couple of videos on NixOS, I explain a little bit of how it works using the symlinks. Pretty much everything in NixOS is a symlink. So when you restart your computer, you're presented with a grub menu that basically asks you which set of symlinks do you want to use? Which generation do you want to use? So when grub finally pops up here, we can go to all configurations and here you have all the different sets of symlinks. Now each set of symlinks points to different versions of packages you have installed or maybe some you know, configuration, some generations don't have packages you installed before. You added packages, you removed packages, you updated packages and so on. And this changes what is present in your system that is running at the time. So I'll just boot back in here and I'll try to show you, I can't really show you graphically using Nautilus, but I will show you in the terminal. And I'll show you why I can't really show you in Nautilus. It's actually, it's actually a little much. So you open up Nautilus and the Nix store is actually stored right in the root under Nix store. Now, we wait for this to load and we wait and we wait because there's a lot for it to load. So there you go. And I can switch it to list view to make it a little more, bit more readable, but we wait, we wait, and I'm not going to wait anymore. So into the terminal we dive and I'll show it to you this way. So let's go to Nick's store. And let's just have a look at what's in here. So here are all your packages. Now it looks like a mess, but I explained before how you can have multiple versions of the same program on your system at the same time. And you can see here, they all have this jumble at the beginning. This is a hash. This is generated by the code. So when the package for K menu edit. I'm just picking something random here. When this package of this version is created, it runs a hash on it, which generates this number. That way, when K menu edit 5.17.6 is released, the code has changed, so it will generate a different hash. So you'll never have the same folder name twice. It's impossible. So now even if there was a bug fix, like even if the file version is different, so you think, okay, well, it has the version like right on it. Well, not all of them do. Most of them do. Yes. However, this is the way you can have multiple versions in the store at the same time, and they will not override each other. They will be in different directories always. So now let's have a look. For example, I'm going to do a list again but I'm going to filter out, let's say Firefox. You can see here, there are multiple Firefox 81.0. So these are probably bug fixes, security updates and whatnot that were applied and it kept the 81.0. Maybe it's 81.0.35 release, whatever, who knows, but you can have all of these in here at the same time. And it's fine because the hash, is different because the code is different. You also notice something that I just noticed earlier today that they all say December 31st, 1969. Not sure why, but not important. <laughs> just something I wanted to point out because I'm sure someone watching this video will point it out. I did not install this via a time machine. Okay, fine. So how does all this come together? How does it work? Let me just clear this up here. Now, executables like Firefox, you just type it in and you run. You don't have to know the entire path, but how does Linux know where to run it? How does the, the terminal, the shell bash, how does it know where to find it on the disk? That's the path environment variable. So if we look on another system here, this is Debian. If 
I go echo path, you can see here, these are all the different paths where you can find executables. So this path variable is where Linux will look for those executables. So you can see slash bin slash USR slash bin. Here's our local bin, like all these different places where you might find executables. Now let's have a look in Nix here and we're going to go echo path. And it has a few different places, run wrappers bin, home door in next profile bin. And the one thing I want to point out is run current system SW bin. So let's go have a look in there. And what is in here? A bunch of programs, including look at that Firefox. So why is it here and not slash bin? Well, this is how it points to different generations while it's running. So if we go LS hyphen L, what this will show you is that all these in this color, they are all symlinks. This is what I talked about in the previous videos. So let's list all these again, but I'm going to filter out Firefox. So now you can see that it is pointing to the Nick store here, Firefox 81 slash bin slash Firefox. So this folder has its own bin, its own binary directory. So let's go have a look in there. So I'm going to do this, have a look, look at that. Even has share. It's like as if it is a root, which it is. And there's the Firefox executable. So I know this seems confusing and it's a bit of a mess to look at like this for the first time. But when you have the Nix package manager who is aware of everything and has everything set up the, a certain way, it makes a lot of sense. Just like any other package manager, uh, if you ever saw my video on the Linux directories explained, the packages get put all over the place. All the different files in the packages are spread everywhere and that's normal. That's not something a user needs to worry about. That's something that the package manager has to worry about. That's something the system needs to worry about. That's not something you need to worry about. Now I've shown you before how to add and remove things and it's pretty simple. And then you need to clean up every once in a while because I am using, what do I have on here? Not very much. I have Chromium, Firefox, LibreOffice, Telegram. That's about it and I'm using 17 and a half gigs on my drive. So maybe that's a little bit much. It should be maybe between seven and 10 gigs, but it's 17, but that's because I have 10 generations still saved, which includes me switching to Plasma and then switching back to GNOME. So if I revert back to one of those old generations, it will just boot up in Plasma. So let's do a bit of a cleanup here. So I'm gonna do a sudo nix collect garbage hyphen D. This is going to clean up the system, remove a whole bunch of those unused packages from the store that are no longer in use. And it could take a while. You could see deleting trash here. I'll, I'll mention that in a second. It could take a while if you have a lot of generations. Fortunately, this is an SSD, so it's fairly quick. But what it does first is it moves everything into the trash and then it deletes the trash. So this is kind of a uh, a little safety in case it needs to abort because it has an issue cleaning up the store. So if you see it sitting here for a little while, don't worry about it. It's not broken. This is what it's supposed to do. Now I've had a lot of comments on how NixOS doesn't follow the standards of, you know, where the Linux folders are supposed to be and everything, but they are still there. They're just linked elsewhere. It's something that NixOS had to do in order to get the system to run. So if you go into bin, for example, you only have SH because it goes somewhere else. ETC has a whole bunch of symlinks that lead to other places. So now I can see in the terminal here that uh, the garbage collecting is done. 3,732 store paths were deleted. So a whole bunch of old packages that weren't being used anymore were deleted and 4.7 gigs were freed. And if you have a look now in the file system, it says that there's 10 gigs used. Now there was 17 before, 
So five gigs, that's not really accurate. It was a little bit more than that, but I'm not gonna complain. So now we're ready to reboot. However, there's something that needs to be done first because remember, grub hasn't been updated yet. So we're gonna do a sudo nix os rebuild switch, which is going to rebuild the system, which we haven't really made any changes, but in the end, it's going to update grub and it's going to remove all those previous configurations that we're no longer using anymore because the garbage cleanup just got rid of everything. So you can see there, updating the grub to menu, activating configuration, blah, 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 all done. So let's go and have a look. Now, this is really weird when you're used to Pac-Man or apt or DNF or any other package manager, um, just getting your head wrapped around how everything is just spread out on your drive and it's just a matter of where is it pointing. So you can see here, configuration 10 is the only configuration left. All the other ones have been purged. There are ways of cleaning up automatically as well, which I will show you now. So to set up some automation here, we can go into our configuration nix and then in here we are going to go right to the bottom right to the bottom and then before this we're going to do nix.gc equals and you can go automatic equals true dates equals you can specify dates, times, daily, weekly. Let's do weekly. And then for options, this is where you're gonna add switches to the garbage collect. So we're gonna go delete older than, than uh, let's say 30 days. You can make it eight days, you can make it whatever you want, doesn't really matter. And then we're going to close that. So now the garbage collect will run automatically every week and delete everything older than 30 days. So it's not gonna delete anything that's less than 30 days old. It's just gonna delete anything that's older than 30 days old. So do that and I'm gonna do a NixOS rebuild switch and that will activate that feature. And there we go. Now it's all set. And you can see the following new units were started. Nix-gc.timer, which is going to run every week. And it's going to run that command to do the garbage collect. Now that delete older than switch is not something that is only for automation. You could also use that at any time. So collect garbage, delete older than say nine days. And then it'll go through, it'll search, it'll find anything older than nine days and it will delete it. Don't forget again after to run the NixOS rebuild switch to have it repopulate the grub menu items so that you're not listing the older generations that you don't want anymore. And now that I've cleaned up all that stuff, if we go to Nix store and I'm gonna list again, and earlier I listed looking for Firefox. Now you can see here now, I still have Firefox 60 ESI. This is the source. And it's just a derivative. It's not the actual. Um, it's not the actual program. So I think this is just what came with NixOS when I installed it, which is why it's still here. But you look at here. You have all these DRV files. These are derivative files. These are not directories with stuff in it. These are just files telling NixOS to do stuff with this stuff. Because then if we go look in here. see in Firefox because we can go like this also and you can go where is Firefox it is here but now wait a minute look at this this is different well that's because with NixOS being NixOS yeah it's just a sim link so this folder that we're in is just our current system path this is our current system this is what we're running in maybe adding another layer of confusion on top of the other layers of confusion. As I said before, the operating system, the Nix package manager, 
knows where everything is so not really an issue if you run into any problems with an update all you have to do is roll back to a previous version and then you're good to go but on the surface what's important is you're running an operating system that works well is clean doesn't break and see about chromium chromium version 85 so hey, it's even running newish software the gnome version i'm running is fairly recent it's 3.34 it's not the newest but it's new it runs well um the nvidia graphics thing not something that i have looked into not something that i will look into but you can also use flat packs by the way and if you're using flat packs that means you can use the gnome software center i don't have flat packs set up right now so this really does nothing right now but you can use it if you choose to use flat packs so then you have an alternative to using Nix packages or flat packs or both. I hope that clears up some things or hey, maybe it even adds more confusion to the greatness that is Nix OS. All these things happen behind the scenes. And if you're just a user, these are things that you don't need to know about. Just like how, how does Linux work behind the scenes? How does the, the kernel work behind the scenes? How does your car work under the hood? Like, Sometimes you just want to use it. So does it matter? The important thing is that it works and it works well and it's stable. So that's just something you're just going to have to play with and then decide for yourself. We have a fairly recent kernel here and a decent running system that runs GNOME, Plasma, XFCE, Mate, even Pantheon. Yes, you heard me. It runs Pantheon. So yeah. Pantheon, let's uh, check this out. Pantheon, Gala, files, it's all here. All your Pantheon applications are here running on the back of NixOS. So pretty cool. Something you might wanna check out and play with. Good thing is you can switch to Pantheon. And if you don't like it, just switch back. It's all in the configuration file. All you have to do is put this line right here in the configuration file. You can see I've commented out all the other ones. Just Pantheon enabled equals true, and you end up with this. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this, uh, <laughs> this makes it a little bit more confusing, but also sheds light a little bit more on how the system works. This may or may not be the last NixOS video. I'm not sure. There are some other things I want to look at, such as virtual machines and containers within NixOS, which seem pretty simple to set up. It's kind of the same way. Just, you know, write up your configuration files and away you go. So I'm going to see how that works. Check it out. And then uh, who knows? There may be more NixOS in the future. But I also have a very long line of other distros to check out as well and a lot of how-tos that I'm working on. So if you liked the video, go ahead, click on like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get your notifications. And if you'd like to support my channel, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, bash on.